Ah bon. Euh, salut. Euh, avant d'entrer dans le vif du sujet, euh, je voudrais expliquer le fonctionnement de Google Cloud Run dans une diagramme. Euh, en tant qu'ingénieur logiciel, je suis très enthousiaste sur ce sujet. Le processus de développement de Cloud Run est un processus simple en trois étapes. Tout d'abord, vous écrivez votre application en utilisant votre langage de programmation préféré. Cette application doit démarrer un serveur HTTP. Ensuite, vous construisez et emballez votre application dans une image conteneur. Enfin, vous déployez l'image du conteneur dans CloudRun. Une fois que vous avez déployé votre image de conteneur, vous obtenez une URL, une pointe d'accès HTTPS unique. CloudRun démarre votre conteneur à la demande pour traiter les requêtes. Il garantit également que toute la requête en train sont traitées en ajoutant et la supprimant dynamiquement des conteneurs. CloudRun vous permet de vous concentrer sur l'écriture du code et non sur l'infrastructure qui déployait et exécutait euh, votre application. Euh, C'est la programme. Euh, je vais commencer par mon exposé. Ensuite, euh, on aura une séance de démo suivie de questions et réponses. Euh, si vous avez des questions pendant la session, euh, mettez-les dans le chat. Je reviendrai vers vous à la fin de la session. Je terminerai la première heure par une courte pause, euh, pause euh, puis je passerai au lab laboratoire. Avant euh, de tout vous dire sur CloudRun, euh, j'aimerais vous parler un peu de moi. Je m'appelle Witz Veinema. Mon nom se prononce ainsi, oui, euh, comme le, like the word yes in French, oui. Oui, ça, oui, ça. Je suis ingénieur logiciel et formateur chez Bing. Euh, Bing est une société de services informatiques natifs du cloud. Nous sommes forts en ingénierie, en formation et en transformation. Et nous travaillons, travaillons en, avec tous les clouds publics, euh, Google Cloud, Amazon, euh, Azure et Alibaba. J'aime dessiner des diagrammes pour expliquer les choses. Euh, et, et je le partage sur mon LinkedIn et Twitter. Alors, n'hésitez pas à vous connecter avec moi euh, ou me suivre. Je viens, euh, viens des Pays-Bas, ce qui signifie que vous pouvez tout me demander sur les vélos. Euh, J'ai compté ce matin et en tant qu'une famille de quatre personnes, euh, nous possédons euh, dix, dix vélos. Encore une chose, je ne suis pas le célèbre vice-venema qui a créé Postfix et qui travaille maintenant pour Google. C'est ma principale religion, euh, relation professionnelle. Euh, J'ai écrit le livre d'O'Reilly sur CloudRun. Euh, je l'ai écrit en 2020, en plein milieu d'une pandémie. Euh, C'est la première fois que j'ai écrit et ce fut une expérience formidable. Et le mieux, c'est que les gens aiment vraiment mon livre. Euh, c'est un soulagement si vous venez de passer deux ans à créer quelque chose. Uh, Kelsey Hightower, une personne uh, bien connue dans notre communauté, a même écrit la préface de mon livre. Son leadership a été une inspiration pour moi et pour beaucoup d'autres dans la communauté technologique. Voici ce qu'il a écrit. J'ai accompagné des milliers de clients et j'ai écrit un cadre pour aider les développeurs Go à construire plus rapidement des, des applications CloudRun. Et même moi, j'ai écrit une chose ou deux de ce livre, ce qui m'a pris euh, trois ans à, à apprendre, vite c'est le livre en moins d'une douzaine de chapitres. Euh, comme vous pouvez euh, l'imaginer, je, je suis super fier de cet accomplissement. Je travaille maintenant aussi avec euh, Google Cloud pour, euh, pour mettre un point de nouveau cours « Application Development with Cloud Run ». Et la session dans laquelle vous vous trouvez actuellement est un euh, aperçu de l'un des modules du cours. Après cette session, 
euh, vous comprendrez comment Cloud Run se compare aux autres plateformes sur Google Cloud, euh, comme Compute Engine, euh, Kubernetes Engine et euh, Cloud Functions. Elle vous aiderait également à comprendre quelles sont les charges de travail qui pourraient convenir et celles qui ne conviennent pas. Well, that was hard. I, I hope you, uh, you got everything from this. Uh, I, I really love French as a language and I, I love to go on holidays in, in France, but man, this is hard. Um, and that's why I am super happy to introduce you now to Ezekiel, uh, who is the host of this session. And so I will present the rest of my parts in English. And after every section, uh, Ezekiel will uh, résumé en français. So we figured that's that's a great way to uh, to do this together. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm super happy that, that he helped me with this. And in fact, he is the one who has helped me to translate this entire slide deck from English to French, including all of the diagrams. So I am super, super grateful for that. Um, and I will let him introduce himself to you now, as he can. Merci. Ok, euh, excusez. Euh, bonsoir encore une fois de plus. Je crois que je me suis déjà présenté, donc je vais faire bref. Euh, je suis le manager du JDG Cloud à Bidjan. Donc, on est là aujourd'hui pour la séance euh, Cloud euh, Introduction à Cloud Run. Donc, je vais essayer de résumer en quelques mots. Donc, sans plus tarder, je vais laisser M. Witzer continuer. Donc. Cool. Um, yeah, so. After this lengthy introduction, you know almost everything about me. I mean, you know how many uh, vélo I, I have in my in my in my uh, in my garden. And but I would like to know a bit, little bit more about me, about you as well, so that I have a bit more of an idea who I have in front of me. So uh, please let me know uh, who you are and where you're from in the chat. It's uh, there, the chat box, please. I'm expecting a lot of people from French, from France. <laughs> and from Nantes, of course. Well, this is a great story, actually, because um, this how I met uh, Ezekiel uh, is because he was in one of my earlier meetups, and I I discovered that he would um, turn on the subtitles uh, because English is not his native language, of course. So he would turn on the subtitles in Google Meet and then translate those. So I thought that was like a great, like twenty twenty appropriate way to uh, to join a, a, a session in a foreign language. Excellent. I'm so glad to uh, that that I can be here. Um, but let's 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 get started and let's start by introducing you to or refreshing your knowledge of containers. So let's let's start with the structure of a container image. A container image is a uh, package with your application in it, along with everything your application needs to run. For example, in a container image for a Java application, your application is packaged together with the appropriate Java virtual machine. So um, that might still sound a bit abstract, so let's zoom in a bit further. A good way to think about a container image is that it's an archive with files, it's sort of a zip file, right? So in the files, they include system libraries, uh, executable programs, uh, data files such as HTML files, um, images, and binary blobs. And, and if you use an interpreted language such as uh, JavaScript or Python, your application source files might even be in there. And in the rest of this session, I'm, I'm talking about container images on the one hand and container containers on the other. Uh, and both are different concepts, so it makes sense to uh, explain what that means. So if you run a container image, that's a container. 
And running a container image means you are executing one of the programs stored inside of the container image. So in case of that Java application, uh, the program you execute is in fact the Java virtual machine. So a container represents the running processes of your applications. Um, it only exists at runtime. And if there are no running processes, there is no container, right? So think about it like you, you start an application, it's stored on the disk. Uh, when you start it, it's a process. When the process stops, it's, it's gone, right? So a container image, that's the files. And the running process, that's the container. And a running container has two other important characteristics. There are more, but these two are the really important ones. And they will have, and those are really important to understand. So first, um, the, all the files from the container image are used to create a private file system for the container. So these are all the files your application will see. Um, and second, uh, your application has access to a virtual private network interface with a local IP. So that means you can always open a port and listen for incoming connections. And that's exactly what Cloud Run expects your web application to do. It wants you to listen on port number 8080 to handle HTTP requests. And that includes HTTP2 uh, or gRPC. Uh, you can open web sockets, everything is supported. But you can't, for instance, start an SMTP server and expect that to work, right? It has to be HTTP. Um, by the way, that port number 8080, it's a configurable default. So if port 8080 isn't available to your application because you're running Ruby on Rails and you want it to be 3000, I don't know, um, or, or you don't have access to the source files anymore because you just have a binary, you can still run it on, on Cloud Run, but you have to change the configuration. And also, you don't need to provide an HTTPS server because Google's infrastructure handles that for you and your, your traffic on the Google network is always encrypted. So besides the requirement for an HTTP server that listens on the correct board, there's no real restriction to your application. You're not supposed to um, use specific runtime libraries. If, if it compiles, if you get it into a container, then it runs on Cloud Run. Um, if it's a Linux container, obviously. So you can use any programming language using any dependency, even binary dependencies. And as long as it runs in a container, it runs on Cloud Run. And that's super powerful because containers can run anywhere. And once you have your web application packaged into that container image, um, it can go to, on Google Cloud, it can go to Compute Engine on a virtual machine or uh, on, Kubernetes, on, on a Kubernetes cluster. Uh, or on your local machine, you can use Docker or Podman, which are uh, container runtimes. It is me, Anfalsa. Okay, uh, je vais faire uh, un résumé de tout ce qui a été dit uh, depuis le début de la séance. Donc, uh, Monsieur Witzer a eu à parler des images de containers. Donc, ce qu'il faut savoir, c'est que pour utiliser CloudRun, on a besoin des images de containers et les images de con containers plutôt ne sont rien d'autre euh, que euh, des archives qui comportent des fichiers, euh, des bibliothèques et tout ce dont l'application a besoin pour pouvoir fonctionner. Et en dehors de ça, on a eu à parler de conteneurs. Donc, ce qu'il faut savoir sur les conteneurs, c'est que un conteneur, c'est juste, euh, c'est juste le fait d'exécuter son image de conteneur dans un environnement donné. Donc, lorsque vous exécutez votre image de conteneur dans un environnement donné, Cela se transforme en conteneur pour pouvoir exécuter l'application que vous avez développée. Donc, en dehors de ça, ce qu'il faut savoir aussi est que on a besoin de serveur HTTP pour pouvoir répondre aux demandes. Donc, lorsque vous déployez votre application sur CloudRun, CloudRun s'attend à ce que vous démarrez votre serveur HTTP pour pouvoir recevoir des requêtes et pouvoir répondre aux requêtes des utilisateurs. En dehors de ça, il faut savoir aussi que CloudRun, par défaut, hein, euh, ajoute la certification SSL à votre application, ce qui permet à vos utilisateurs de pouvoir interagir avec votre application de manière sécurisée à travers HTTPS. Donc voilà un peu en résumé ce qui a été dit euh, par M. Witzel euh, pour la première session de cette séance. Euh, M. Witzel. Merci beaucoup. Um... 
Well, so let, now let's explore how to get your application to Cloud Run. Um, when you deploy a container image for the first time, uh, Cloud Run creates a service. And a service, that's a very broad and non-specific word, but it means something very specific in Cloud Run. And all the specifics will become clear during this session. But the first thing to know is that a service has only one, uh, only one active container image. And the second thing to know is that every service has a public, unique HTTPS endpoint, which is managed by Cloud Run. So Cloud Run receives incoming requests to that public HTTPS endpoint. And to handle the requests, Cloud Run starts your container from the container image. And Cloud Run also makes sure to handle all incoming requests by starting more than one container if that's necessary. That's a feature called auto-scaling, and I will come back to that later in this session. Ce qu'il faut savoir, c'est que tout à l'heure, M. Wittler a parlé des services. Et au niveau des services, il faut savoir que lorsqu'on déploie une image de conteneur sur Cloud Run, cela crée un service. Donc, à chaque fois qu'on déploie une image, on crée un nouveau service. Donc, en dehors de ça, il faudrait savoir aussi que notre service, on a accès à notre service à travers un point d'extrémité HTTPS qui est associé à notre conteneur qui est en plus d'exécution. Donc, à travers HTTP, on peut accéder à notre service pour pouvoir échanger avec notre service. En dehors de ça, il faut savoir que les points d'entrée HTTP, c'est-à-dire l'URL qui est généré par Cloud Run, parce que lorsqu'on crée un service sur Cloud Run, cela génère une URL et c'est à travers cette URL-là qu'on accède à notre application dans Cloud Run. Donc, comme vous pouvez le voir, l'URL, ça se termine souvent par run.app. En dehors de ça, il y a aussi euh, la configuration des services. Il faut noter que Cloud Run garde euh, les configurations. Donc, lorsque vous effectuez une configuration sur Cloud Run, Cloud Run euh, garde euh, ces configurations-là pour que la prochaine fois, lorsque vous revenez, vous pouvez effectuer des modifications, que ce soit pour modifier la variable d'environnement, que ce soit pour euh, créer euh, une nouvelle prévision de votre application. Donc, Cloud Run stock euh, en local euh, ces configurations-là pour vous permettre à À la prochaine fois, lorsque vous arrivez pour effectuer des notifications, que vous pouvez retrouver cette configuration-là et effectuer tout ce qu'il y a comme modification pour pouvoir améliorer ou mettre une nouvelle version de votre application en ligne. Donc, voilà un peu ce qui a été dit lors de cette deuxième session. Je vais laisser M. Witzer continuer. Merci beaucoup. So, let's take a step back and look at how that container image gets to Cloud Run. Because you're not sending it directly. It's not like you're uploading it to an FTP server. Instead, you are using uh, Artifact Registry as an intermediary storage. So Cloud Run can only pull container images from Artifact Registry. And if you're used to hosting your container images somewhere else, such as in Docker Hub or on your own private container registry, keep in mind that with Cloud Run, you'll need to push them to Artifact Registry first. So what's Artifact Registry? Um, Artifact Registry is a fully managed service in Google Cloud. And it was formerly known as Google Container Registry, or GCR. So, And this is what it is. It's a universal package manager. So you use it to host container images, or Node.js packages, or Java packages. And I think today, you can also use it to, uh, ho um, to host uh, Debian system packages. So. To host your container image, you create a, a Docker repository that Cloud Learn can, Run can uh, pull container images from. So let's take a look at how that works. Um, as soon as you're ready to deploy your container image to Cloud Run, you begin by pushing the image to the Docker repository on Artifact Registry. And, and pushing is what we say uh, when we are uploading a container image and downloading is pulling. So your container image will have a unique image URL in the repository, which you can then use uh, when you deploy it. So, uh, and this is what you do. You will you will hand that image URL over to Cloud Run, which then pulls the image again from Artifact Registry. And this is what you do as a developer, right? You open your web console uh, or the G Cloud Terminal interface, and you enter a command to deploy your image uh, with the reference to that thing. And then Cloud Run pulls the container image from the Docker repository uh, and, and puts it into the service. 
right? And, and to ensure containers on Cloud Run start reliably and fast, uh, Cloud Run copies and stores the container image locally. And this internal container storage is very fast. And this ensures that, you're, that the image size of the container is not a bottleneck for container startup time. Uh, that means that large images, such as your, I don't know, your Python-based application with four gigabytes of dependencies, it starts just as fast as your statically compiled Go binary of just nine megabytes. And uh, it ensures stability, right? So because it makes a copy every time you deploy, uh, your Cloud Run servers will continue to work uh, even if you, I don't know, accidentally delete a container image from Artifact Registry. So uh, that's generally a good thing. Okay. <laughs> okay, OK, tout à l'heure, on a eu à voir que euh, pour utiliser Cloud Run, il fallait une image de conteneur pour pouvoir exécuter cette image de conteneur sur euh, Cloud Run. Maintenant, ce qu'il faut savoir, c'est que pour exécuter les images de conteneur sur Cloud Run, il faut stocker ces images-là dans la TIFAT registre de Cloud. Donc, si par exemple, vous avez votre image sur euh, Docker Hub ou bien sur un autre artefact, Registry, vous ne pouvez pas euh, utiliser directement votre image pour pouvoir euh, la déployer sur Cloud Run. Vous êtes obligé de récupérer votre image de push. Hein, C'est-à-dire vous allez envoyer votre image sur Artifact Registry. Une fois que votre image sera sur Artifact Registry, euh, Artifact Registry va générer un lien, un lien c'est-à-dire une URL, hein, spécialement pour votre image, pour vous permettre de pouvoir utiliser cette image-là au niveau de la création de votre service au niveau de Cloud Run. Donc, en voulant créer votre service sur Cloud Run, vous faites appel au lien de votre image euh, de contenu qui est stockée dans Artifact Registry. Ensuite, vous allez euh, exécuter, euh, euh, comment dire, vous allez lancer votre service et Cloud Run va récupérer ça. Cloud Run va extraire l'image depuis l'Artifact Registry et va faire une copie de l'image qu'il euh, qui va mettre en, en local pour euh, éviter que lorsque, par exemple, euh, il va vouloir redémarrer euh, votre conteneur qui n'aille pas encore sur Artifact de Registry, récupérer l'image une fois encore, pour pouvoir encore réexécuter l'image. Donc, quand on fait une copie euh, de votre image de conteneur en local pour euh, accélérer euh, le redéploiement ou bien euh, la création de notre conteneur. Donc, merci et je crois que je vais laisser la parole à M. Hitz. Thank you. I, I couldn't have put that better, I think. Um, yeah, so I, I've just explained to you how to get your container image to, cl to Cloud Run through Artifact Registry, but I didn't even talk about how to build and package your source code into a container image using Docker, right? And for some use cases, using a container-based workflow is great because, because it gives you a great amount of transparency and flexibility. Because if you build that container image, you have the power to decide exactly what file ends up in your container image and how it gets there and how you build it. But in some cases, that power is just too much to handle. You don't want to worry about containerization. You will, you will, I mean, building an application is already, well, quite, quite some work. So why bother with all the, like some call it, some people call it boring stuff, right? So sometimes you're just looking for a way to turn source code into an HTTPS endpoint. And sometimes you will want your vendor to make sure that your container image is secure, uh, well configured and built in a consistent way. So with Cloud Run, you can do both, right? You can, you can use a container-based workflow, like what I described before, but you can also use a source-based workflow. If you're a more experienced with Google Cloud, you might remember how App Engine does this, right? You go to your... Um, directory with your application in it uh, with the source files and you do gcloud app deploy and you watch uh, google cloud take care of building your application packaging it into a container image and deploying it um, cloud run can do both right so at the end of the demo i will show you a source based deploy as well now let's talk about um, auto scaling on demand containers what what does that mean so Cloud Run starts the container to handle incoming requests. Um, multiple requests can be handled by a container at the same time, uh, concurrently, right? So as long as a container is handling requests, Cloud Run will not shut it down unless something bad happens, like an application uh, crash. And then 
Cloud Run automatically increases capacity when necessary to make sure that it handles all the requests. Um, and this is how that works, right? Every service has an internal HTTP load balancer. And this load balancer distributes requests over the group of available containers. And if Cloud Run no, um, notices that all containers are busy, it starts adding additional containers to the service. And then as soon as demand de decreases again, Cloud Run will pick a few containers, stop sending traffic to them, and then shut them down. Um, there's an upper limit, right? So the number of container instances in a Cloud Run service is limited to 1,000 instances by default. Um, and if you need more, you can submit a request for a quota increase. However, over 1,000 containers can unleash a lot of load on downstream systems and APIs, such as your uh, relational database. And they might not be able to handle that. So in practice, you will find yourself lowering this limit more often than increasing it to uh, safeguard the stability of your system. And this is where it gets interesting. When no requests come to the service for a while, Cloud Run will also shut down that very last container. And then a fresh container will start on demand as soon as a new request comes in. You might also know this as uh, scale to zero. And this process is attractive for economic reasons, right? Because no container means that you're not paying for an idle container. But that's not the whole story. The pricing model on Cloud Run is unique. Um, as you pay only for the system resources you use while a container is handling a request with a granularity of 100 milliseconds. And you also pay, obviously, when your container is starting or shutting down. So and I also want to emphasize that you are charged for container time, not request time. So if your container can handle 50 requests or 200 requests at the same time, you're not paying at 50x or 200x, but just for the container time. And the price of a container increases with more CPU and memory. Uh, you can add up, uh, you can enable up to four vCPUs and eight gigabytes of memory, uh, but that will be more expensive. So most of the other compute products, such as Compute Engine, they charge you for servers as long as they are running, even if you're not using them to handle requests, right? And that means you're paying often for idle server capacity. But it doesn't come for free, because um, now that you know how the pricing model of Cloud One works, it won't be a surprise uh, that the lifetime of a container on Cloud Run is only guaranteed while the container is handling requests. And if it's not handling any requests, uh, Cloud Run can shut it down. It doesn't mean it will, but it might. Right? In fact, containers live much longer than you would expect if they're not handling requests. And, and this is why, because as soon as a container is handling no requests, the CPU is throttled to nearly zero. And that means that your um, application will run at a really slow pace, right? So say hi to the throttle turtle right there. Um, I have to say, I, I, I was corrected recently. So it's not a throttle turtle because turtles are actually very fast swimmers. It's a throttle tortoise. So you know, um, the throttle tortoise, right? It means your application runs very slow if there's no, uh... bye, thank you, uh, if there's no um, requests there. And there's another, and if you've, if you've briefly zoned, zoned out and, and listened to my uh, English voice, um, this, is, this is where it gets important and very different than it used to be in a traditional server, right? So because um, Cloud Run shuts down and throttles idle containers. Yeah, you should complete all work before you return the HTTP request. And this is why, I mean, that request might be the last one to be handled on that very container. And as soon as a container isn't handling any requests, it will run very slow and potentially be stopped. So to be absolutely clear, I'm not saying that you should not use background threads, just make sure to finish processing all work before you return the request to the user, because it might be the last one to run in that container. And the solution here is to turn your um, background task, your asynchronous work into HTTP requests. Um, and there are two products in Google Cloud that help you with this, Cloud Tasks and Cloud Scheduler. And they are both well integrated with Cloud Run. And I should also say that you can also 
Um, this is usually where people think, well, how am I going to handle my event queues? Because uh, with, with uh, PubSub, for instance, right? I, I can't start a subscriber and start pulling in messages because, well, that won't be an HTTP request, right? Um, and in that case, you uh, need to set up an HTTP push subscription because that will just push the events to uh, your uh, HTTP endpoint of the topic. Oh, well. Um, there's another consequence to this concept of disposable containers. Um, disposable because you don't have any control about when they start and stop. Uh, on a traditional server, you, you can store data directly on the server instance on the file system. Um, uh, on Cloud Run, that's not possible. At least, well, it is possible because the disposable, the disposable containers on Cloud Run have a small disk you can write to. Um, this entire file system is in memory and it disappears when the container is shut down. This means you'll need to store persistent data in a downstream system. For example, you can store binary data on cloud uh, storage. Uh, session data goes to Redis, which is memory store on Google Cloud. Um, and your application data can go into a relational database, uh, such as Cloud SQL. The key thing to remember here is that while you can write data to disk, you should be prepared to lose it. And then finally, uh, portability. It's a valid concern for most application developers. And here's a couple of reasons why. So maybe uh, your application needs to run in a geographical region where Google Cloud has no physical presence, right? There are no, in, not the entire world has a Google Cloud data center. And maybe you're also required to uh, store your data there because of data sovereignty. Um, or maybe you're just you want to avoid vendor tie-in because you want to lower switching costs if you want to move to AWS in the future or your own data center. Now, applications on Cloud Run are portable in two ways. One, um, you're deploying a container image, right? So, and you will already learned that containers can run anywhere, which makes them inherently portable. Um, but also the platform Cloud Run. Uh, the, cloud, the Cloud Run platform is a proprietary platform, right? You don't have the source code. But it is API compatible with Gnative, uh, which is an open source project you can extend Kubernetes with. And, and that's an entirely different open source implementation of the same API. Um, it doesn't have throttling, by the way. So this means you can take your Cloud Run application to Kubernetes and get the same runtime behavior and the same API to deploy your application uh, but on your own infrastructure. There's obviously one side note to make here, one big caveat. If your application depends on proprietary services on Google Cloud, um, I'm thinking of data stores that have no open source alternative, such as BigQuery or Firestore or Cloud Spanner, uh, you'll have a harder time migrating your app out of Google Cloud. As long as you stick to data storage solutions that have an open source alternative, you're probably fine. Voilà, résumé en français, s'il vous plaît. OK, euh, merci, M. Lutien. Ah, OK, euh, je vais résumer tout ce qui a été dit depuis le début de la session. OK, donc, au départ, on a eu à parler d'images de conteneurs. Donc, ce qu'on doit savoir, c'est que lorsqu'on veut déployer une application sur Cloud Run, il faut d'abord qu'on crée hein, l'image de notre euh, image de conteneur. Une fois qu'on a créé euh, notre image de conteneur, on, a, on aura dans notre image de conteneur, notre application, avec tout ce qu'il y a comme dépendance dont notre application a besoin pour pouvoir fonctionner correctement. Donc, une fois qu'on a notre image de conteneur, on va push notre image de conteneur dans Artifact Registry. Donc, une fois notre image de conteneur est dans Artifact Registry, nous allons avoir accès à Artifact Registry à travers une URL. Donc, c'est cette URL-là que nous allons mettre dans Cloudrun pour pouvoir créer notre service qui va faire tourner euh, notre image conteneur. Donc, on récupère l'URL de l'image qui est stockée dans Artifact Registry. Ensuite, on va exécuter l'image de conteneur dans Cloud Run. Une fois qu'on a exécuté l'image de conteneur dans Cloud Run, on va démarrer un service. Donc, une fois notre service est en cours d'utilisation, euh, notre service, à, à l'intérieur de notre service, là, à l'intérieur de notre conteneur, on aura un serveur HTTP qui, qui sera démarré. Et c'est ce serveur HTTP qui va répondre 
aux requêtes, ça veut dire lorsqu'on envoie des requêtes sur le service et tout, on se, se servait à ce côté à l'intérieur qui va pouvoir répondre à ces requêtes-là. Donc, une fois on a notre image de conteneur en cours d'exécution au niveau de notre service, on, a, on aura, comme, bien sûr, comme on l'a eu à l'édit tout à l'heure, on aura notre point de sécurité HTTPS qui va nous permettre de pouvoir envoyer des requêtes à notre application, c'est-à-dire le lien qui est généré par Cloud pour pouvoir communiquer avec l'application. Maintenant, en dehors de ça, il faut savoir qu'au niveau de Cloud il y a ce qu'on appelle euh, la mise à l'échelle horizontale. Donc, qu'est-ce qui se passe en réalité Au fur et à mesure, le nombre de personnes qui accèdent à votre application, c'est-à-dire au fur et à mesure, le nombre de requêtes qui arrive vers votre application augmente. En, euh, Cloud au, euh, au même moment, va augmenter le nombre de conteneurs derrière pour pouvoir supporter la charge des requêtes qui arrivent. Maintenant, au niveau de Cloud Run, vous avez aussi la possibilité de définir le nombre de requêtes que va recevoir un conteneur. Donc, vous pouvez dire mon conteneur, ça reçoit 50. Euh, un conteneur peut recevoir 50 requêtes, ou bien un conteneur peut recevoir 60 requêtes. Si bien sûr, il y, a, il y a une limite qui est de 80 requêtes, si je ne me trompe pas. Donc, un conteneur ne peut pas recevoir au-delà de 80 euh, requêtes. Donc, c'est à vous de définir par défaut comment cela fonctionne. Donc, il y a cet aspect-là qu'il ne faut pas oublier. Il y a aussi le coût, c'est-à-dire euh, lorsque votre service n'est pas en cours d'utilisation, c'est-à-dire vous ne payez pas parce que personne euh, n'utilise votre service. Et lorsque votre service est en cours d'utilisation, vous allez payer pour la consommation des ressources. Donc, c'est comme ça que Cloud Run fonctionne en ce qui concerne les, euh, les coûts. S'il y a des requêtes et qu'il y a des personnes qui arrivent, qui utilisent votre application, vous allez payer pour le temps de consommation. S'il y a personne qui accède à votre application, vous ne payez pas. Maintenant, si par défaut, vous, vous, vous avez décidé d'avoir au moins un conteneur en cours euh, d'exécution, c'est-à-dire si vous voulez qu'il y ait au minimum un conteneur en cours d'exécution à chaque fois qu'on va arriver sur votre application, qu'on va envoyer des requêtes à votre, à votre application plutôt, là, vous serez obligé de payer pour euh, l'exécution de ce conteneur, là vu que le, le conteneur est exécuté, même si on n'envoie pas de requêtes. Maintenant, si vous voulez aussi, vous pouvez dire, vous pouvez mettre ça à zéro. Donc, s'il n'y a personne, il n'y a pas de conteneur en cours d'exécution, non, vous ne payez pas. Si, y a des, si vous voulez aussi, vous pouvez dire, je vais avoir au moins un conteneur en cours d'exécution. Okay. En dehors de ça, pour finir, on a eu aussi à parler de, du ralentissement des conteneurs. Donc, lorsque euh, un conteneur n'est pas en bonne santé, c'est-à-dire un conteneur ne fonctionne pas correctement, Cloud Run peut éteindre ce conteneur et puis il met fin à ce conteneur et puis il va créer un autre conteneur à partir toujours de notre image de conteneur qu'on a eu à envoyer à travers Adipa Donc, il va créer euh, un nouveau conteneur pour pouvoir toujours supporter la charge des requêtes qui vont venir. Donc, voilà un peu euh, tout ce qui a été dit lors de cette session. -là. Je vais laisser à M. Euh, la place à M. Witzer pour la séance de démo. Mr. Witzer. Yeah, oui, oui, oui. oui euh... C'est moi, c'est moi. Merci beaucoup, euh, Ezekiel, euh, pour le résumé. Um, yeah, so before I dive into the demo, um, I want to show the two options you have available to interact with Google Cloud. So there's the web console, which is, um, um, yeah, well, a, a website with a, a, a GUI and, and the G Cloud terminal command line interface. And the web interface is a great way to get started. Um, and most products also have uh, polished getting started wizards that guide you through creating your first resources. So um, if you haven't, and I do realize I'm giving this talk to a GGC uh, group, so probably you have. But if you haven't, I encourage you to start a trial and explore Cloud Run. Uh, and if you enable the free credits, you don't have to worry about being charged. Um, but then the G Cloud command line interface actually offers a great user experience to those who like the command line, because you can write scripts and you get helpful suggestions if you mistype a command. Um, but that brings me to the demo. Let, uh, let's show instel, instead of tell. Um, if you have questions, please type them in the chat because I, uh, I there's time to answer. And I see that uh, Valentin is also taking uh, questions. And he, he, he might even know more about Cloud Run than I do. So uh, I think he will. he's a great person to, to take any questions as well. Um, welcome, Valentin. Thank you for joining. Um, 
All right, so I have a little application here. It's it's a Go based, uh, a Go a Go app. Uh, there's a Go mod file there and a, a little index.html template, and I can run it on my local machine by doing Go, go run main.go, and then I start a HTTP server on port 8080. So if I go to localhost 8080, then I should see my application and. All it does is it collects a bit of uh, metadata from my environment. So in this case, it notices that the total memory of my laptop is uh, 32 gigabytes. And the uptime is one day and one hour and some. Um, and there's a button I shouldn't, oh, whoops. Yeah, that um, that stops the application because it, uh, it calls a rest endpoint. Uh, and that rest endpoint stops the process. So if I only run one, that's that's not good. Um, yeah. So then environment variables, uh, the request headers. So yeah. Well, this is uh, Firefox, as you can see. Um, well, let's um, let's uh, let's get this application to Cloud Run, shall we? Uh, I will take the long way, right? So there, there's a there's a Docker file here as well. So um, I can build it into a container image, but. I will first need to create, uh, remember, the um, Docker repository on Artifact Registry, because otherwise I'm going no coming nowhere. So let, let's do that. I will do gcloud artifacts, uh, because that's, is this readable? Do I need to zoom in more? I will zoom in more. Uh, zoom in more. Yes, well, this is readable. This, this this is definitely read, readable. Anyway, so um, yeah. Oh, this is what I meant when I said uh, G Cloud has helpful suggestions. So if I I just I just typed G Cloud artifacts and then it gives me a list of available command groups. So I need to do something with the repositories. So that's that's next repositories. Repo is it? Oh boy, Torres. And then I can create one. Okay, good. And then it tells me I need a location and a repository format. Okay, I can do that. Uh, location, location, yeah, uh, US uh, repository format. Repo oh boy, repository. Uh, that's uh, Docker. And then it needs a name, Cloud Run Demo. There we go. It's creating a Docker repository for me now. And it's there. So now I have a private um, Docker repository in Google Cloud, and I can push container images to it from my local machine. Or from if you're building in, in Google Cloud, you can also push them there. But I'm pushing it now from my local laptop. But that means I will need to teach my Docker install um, how to authenticate with Google Cloud when I push it. Right. So um, that's what I will do. Next, no, I will. I will first build that image. That's that's a way better plan. Um, but I need to format that container image URL. So and then we'll have my project name in it. Um, and a Google project is how you organize all the resources, right? Every everything has has to be in a project. That's how it works, right? So I will make an environment variable with just that. So. In case you don't know, uh, bash. Uh, this is a subshell. So this command will give me the name of the project, and uh, I will put that into the project environment variable. And then I am creating a image URL from it, which is, uh, I'll just type this out. So image, uh, the URL is uh, US Docker. US is the location I just entered. Docker is the repository type, uh, the project, and then uh, Cloud Run Demo is the name of the, art, the repository, and then I, I'm, I'm calling it hello. So next next up is building it with Docker. Docker built uh, this directory. That's why the dot is there. Um, and I will tag it, tag it with the image URL. Uh, image, image. Uh, and the file I am reading is the Docker file. I know this is the default, but I like to make things explicit. So it's now building. Oh boy, invalid arguments. You always have this. Tag T for F for T. If element, wow. What went wrong? Tag, we'll just call it. Oh, 
way. No. Maybe. Ah, oh, let me. Ah. So somehow this didn't get executed. I love it when demos are like this. Also, when I'm doing this in public, my brain freezes a bit. I'm like I'm a, I'm like an idle container that doesn't get any requests. My CPU is throttled. So there's the container image. I um, I have built one, and now I can push it, right? And that means I need to authenticate Docker. So I will. Uh, there's a helper in GCloud that lets me do just that. GCloud auth uh, configure Docker for me. Configure Docker. Hey Google, configure Docker for me. Uh, US dot US dash Docker. So this tells it that whenever I try to push a container image URL that has this domain, that will need to um, use dcloud to authenticate. Um, and you only need to do this once. So I've already do this, done this before. So that's why it said, hey, there is already one. Um, it's a credential helper. So you need to do this only once. But I'm showing it to you because if you're trying this on your own machine, then you will horribly uh, get stuck on this step. Um, yes, push the image image to cloud. Uh, hey, uh, Docker, can you uh, push the image? There it goes. And it's off to Google Cloud. This will take a while. This is where it uploads the nine megabyte go binary. Exciting. OK, container image. It's in the cloud. Um, I will now do uh, G run deploy. It's time to deploy. G can run deploy. Uh, the image is what's in this thing. Uh, I will need to give it a name. I will make the name Hello World. And then uh, I will say allow unauthenticated traffic uh, because otherwise you're not able to send requests to it because it's protected. Uh, did you mean this? Did, did you mean uh, G Club really helps me with these demos? It's really good. great. Did you mean authenticated? Authenticated? Yes, I meant that. Oh my. I zoomed in too far. Sorry, sorry for making this so boring. Um, I will now, I have this copy and pasteable. So I will now copy and paste it to prevent any mistakes. There it goes. I'm deploying the first service. Yes. <laughs> OK, so I have that URL. HTTPS URL is right there. And I can uh, see it. Here. So this tells me more, right? So there's a total memory of 256 max. The uptime is five seconds. Uh, there's one CPU. It's deployed in the region. US Central has a service account and an instance ID, right? So if I stop this, I'm probably, yeah, I get a different instance, right? And the uptime is now zero seconds, right? Because this was the first request that was actually handled by this instance. So even if I crash and stop my application, it still works. It still works. It's auto healing. This is magical. This makes my life easier. Um, and there's environment variables. It tells me the number of revisions. This is the first revision, right? That's every version you push. If I do a G Cloud run deploy again, then this number will be higher. If you request headers, uh, we're clearly on Google Cloud because there's a Cloud Trace context there. Um, yes. So another thing, what it's good to notice is that um, I got a new instance again. And probably someone found the URL and is clicking it for me now. <laughs> Four seconds. OK, good. Seven seconds. The uptime is increasing now, right? I've, I've sent five requests to this thing. And the uptime is uh, 13 seconds now. So, but I'm not. I, I I was not charged for 13 seconds of container uptime. I was only charged for the container uh, time rounded up to that 100 milliseconds uh, uh, that it took to to serve the requests. Right. So six requests, uh, but I'm paying paying only for 600 milliseconds and not for the 30 seconds of uptime. So that's that's good. Um, what else? Uh, yeah, I want to show you how the added deploy uh, 
the workflow is because I was so enthusiastic about that. So I, I might as well show you why. Um, I will open my editor and I will change the title of the page for you and then deploy a new version. So uh, where is it? Title here. Hello, bonjour. Uh, GGG nums. GGG cloud nums. Do I spell this correctly? Yes, I probably do. Okay, save it. Um, and do a Docker build. Docker uh, build. So this builds the container image locally. Uh, and I then push it. Am I? Yes. And then I push it. Push. So, and if this was like it's pushing all the layers, so it says layer already existed, so it means that it's not uploading that one. Um, so, if you have a really, really big container image, that will probably save you time. Um, and now I do a deploy again with the same image, right? And then when it's there, I will refresh it for you, and then you will see a new title, hopefully, if I press save. That always goes wrong. You know how demos are. But it's there. Bonjour, GDG Cloud, not a GDG Cloud, Abidjan. Well, that works. I also promised you to show you the source-based workflow. Um, OK, so I will, I will go ahead and uh, do rm dockerfile. Dockerfile be gone. I will prove it to you. If I do an LS, there is no Dockerfile anywhere to see. Um, so now I will use the source-based workflow to deploy the container. Gcloud uh, beta, because it's not yet generally av available, but will probably be soon. Um, so Gcloud beta run deploy, and then the same application, hello world. And this time I'm not uh, giving it an image URL, but I will say source uh, is this directory, right? The dot is there. And what it does, it, it takes the um, application source files locally, it will uploading them. It also says that, uh, uploading sources. And then it will build the container for you. Uh, and how it does this is with uh, Google Cloud Build Packs. So Google has open sourced um, a, a little, uh, an implementation of Build Packs. And that will turn your source code into a container image. And well, in this case, it's a Go app, so it will look at uh, the directory, see a go.mod file, and think, well, I will need to probably do go build on this and put the binary in a container image, and then, well, that's it, probably. And it does that for you. But if it were a directory with um, a node a node application, uh, it would see a package.json file. So it would know to do npm install and then put all the 32,000 node modules uh, files into the container image and upload that to Google Cloud. And that will work too, right? But the, it would make sure not to run the, the thing as root or something, right? Um, so you get a bit of safety. And it's reproducible because that's like that was the thing with App Engine. Uh, you would just throw at your source, and then you, fingers crossed, that it all works out. And if it broke, uh, no idea what went wrong. But now with Google Cloud Build Packs, you can actually download them uh, and reproduce the thing on your local machine. It does take a bit more time than my uh, container-based workflow. So there you, there you have one of those trade-offs. Um, refresh the page. And I can see that I forgot to change the title. but the revision is now 0.0.0.3, so it's the third revision. Um, I can change the title and show you now, because that will take too much time. Um, now, what I did is um, I've created a hands-on uh, lab. And you can, like, you will get a shell on the Google Cloud, and you basically can do the same thing that I just showed you, 
but you can do it for yourself. And, and this is great for learning. Um, you don't even need to create an account or anything. It's just uh, 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 open a link and press start. Um, and I'm pasting it in the chat. So you can already click the link and click a few dialogues and press start track because it will take two minutes to set everything up. And then you, you have a uh, your private um, Google Cloud project and you can perform an exercise. I've, like it, it takes it step by step. Um, it's the real thing. You will be working on a on a real virtual machine that connects with this temporary Google Cloud account. And I've prepared a set of challenges that are uh, that are progressively harder. It will start start out really friendly. You can just copy and paste some snippets. It feels a bit like Quick Labs. Um, but the further you get into the track, the less guidance I give you. So it's it feels more like a game. I, uh, it's more like enjoyable. Um, and I'm here for your questions. Still, uh, yeah. But we can also take a short break because uh, we're at the one hour mark now. So, uh, Ezekiel, what the what's the plan? Did you want to summarize this again in Frank? Maybe that, that that's probably a great idea. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, Mr. Vitsa qui a présenté comment déployer sur Cloudrun et tout. Donc, il nous a montré un peu comment uh, manipuler Cloudrun, uh, créer son image, stocker son image sur Artifact Registry, récupérer son image. Uh, envoyer son image sur Artifact, euh, récupérer son image depuis Artifact Registry, puis créer un service sur Cloud Run avec son image de conteneur, et puis euh, exécuter notre service pour voir si ça fonctionne correctement. Donc, on a vu tout à l'heure qu'il euh, a eu à accéder à, à, à l'application qu'il a, a déployée à travers euh, son navigateur. Euh, donc, il a mis l'URL qui a été généré par Cloud Run, et puis dès qu'il a mis l'URL, il a accédé à l'application, puis il a vu comment fonctionnait l'application, euh, les ressources utilisées et tout ce qu'il y avait comme détails sur l'application. Donc, c'était un peu ça. Maintenant, euh, la partie laboratoire, c'est la partie où euh, nous allons faire euh, nous-mêmes tout ce que M. Witzer nous a montré tout à l'heure lors de la séance de démo. Donc, comment créer euh, une image de conteneur, comment push une image de conteneur dans Artefact Registry, comment récupérer notre image de conteneur pour pouvoir l'exécuter sur CloudRun et puis comment après une fois qu'on a exécuté notre euh, image de conteneur sur CloudRun et puis notre, notre service ou notre application est disponible, comment accéder à notre application pour voir comment ça fonctionne. Donc c'est ce que nous allons faire tout à l'heure. Donc M. Routier a donné, il a donné un lien dans le chat. Donc nous allons tous accéder au lien pour pouvoir effectuer le laboratoire ensemble. Maintenant, en attendant qu'on débute le laboratoire, si vous avez des questions, n'hésitez pas à poser des questions dans la partie questions-réponses. I'm finish. Uh, let's go to take the lab. Yeah, so, so this is the point where you can like say goodbye like David uh, just that did. Um... Or, or stay around here and uh, I'll be in the chat to answer any questions if you got stuck in the lab. Um, yeah. Um, we can also move to Google Meet and do a more like video chat thingy. Um, it's up to you. Uh, but I'm assuming if you are still here. Okay, uh, here's what we do. If you if you want to take the lab, uh, put it into the chat, and I will all stick around to help you if you get stuck. How does that sound? So put it into the chat. Yes, I do the lab, and I want you to stick around. Merci, Valentin. OK. Uh... Je ne sais pas s'il y a un participant qui a bien envie de partager son écran pour effectuer le laboratoire. Est-ce que c'est un hair dryer? Ok. Um... 
J'espère que je vais partager mon écran pour faire la voix pas. Ah, Mr. Wister, please, I'm sure, uh, I'm sure my screen to, uh, to, uh, to execute the, the lab. You want me to do the lab? Or you want to do the lab? Oh, okay, thanks. Okay, so it depends if you do the English. Well, I want to do the laboratory in French. You can do the laboratory in English. N'hésitez pas à poser vos questions dans le chat pendant que je suis en train de faire le laboratoire. Monsieur Witzer va répondre aux questions. La question dit utiliser les boutons. Je pense avoir plus de questions. Ok, il y a plein de monde. On a eu à voir tout ça tout à l'heure. On va créer un référentiel d'un artefact de l'industrie. Ensuite, nous allons construire une image de conteneur en utilisant Docker. Après, nous allons pousser l'image du conteneur dans le référentiel et déployer l'image du conteneur sur Platon. Ok, il y a un autre environnement qui est en train d'être créé. Donc, je vais attendre le temps que l'environnement soit créé pour pouvoir démarrer le laboratoire. Donc, on va commencer si vous avez des questions. Question. Question. I have a question. Well, I just I just noticed that there is actually a Q and A tab in the chat. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> Okay, um, okay, there are okay. no questions. So. Uh, okay, peut-être que si il n'y a, a pas de questions, dans ce cas, on va faire le laboratoire aussi. On va faire le laboratoire aussi. On va faire partie de la séance de travail. On va attendre. Thank you. Okay. Um, ou bien on, on va on va laisser les, les participants faire le laboratoire à leur niveau et si uh, ils ont des problèmes uh, ils pourront uh, vous envoyer un message par, sur les réseaux sociaux. Uh, yes, I have. I will uh, create a link for you. Ok, euh, on start. Ok, 
que a exploração de recursos e se busque a lava justo o valor que se deu para a aplicação, o valor se deu para a aplicação, ok, o valor se deu a aplicação, ele se deu para a aplicação, o valor se deu para o que faz que va construire une autre image qu'on connaît pour voir les difficultés, donc je vais cliquer ici. Suivant, on va passer à la session. Suivant, ok. Maintenant, euh, nous allons envoyer notre image. Ok, on attend. Alors, nous allons créer notre image à partir du DKFA et puis ensuite nous allons déployer notre image sur Artefact Registre. Ok. Ok. Nous allons créer notre artifact registré de repository. Je copie. Ok. Donc, comme vous pouvez le voir, il y a la commande ici qui nous permet de créer notre artifact de repository. Il y a des formats Docker de qui va stocker les images de conteneur et le nom c'est Pro. Donc c'est fini, ça a créé notre territoire. On va continuer. Et ici, euh, on va mettre les variables d'environnement. Euh, le nom de notre projet et puis euh, le lien de notre image. Ok. Ok. Maintenant, nous allons construire notre image. On attend. Ok, c'est terminé. Nous allons continuer. Maintenant, nous allons euh, envoyer notre image dans notre artefact registré. Donc, avec cette commande, nous allons configurer d'abord notre environnement. Et yes. Okay, une fois que nous avons configuré notre environnement, nous allons envoyer notre image dans la défaite de l'histoire. Maintenant, nous allons déployer notre application sur Platform. Donc, ici, à euh on a notre image 
et puis euh, notre application sera disponible pour tout le monde. Puis le nom de notre application, c'est App. Notre application est en cours de création. Euh, si vous rencontrez des problèmes lors de la lors de l'exécution du laboratoire à votre niveau, n'hésitez pas à mettre dans le chat. Ok, notre application est disponible. Oh, okay. Nous allons essayer à notre application. On attend. Nous allons lui vérifier. Ok, et voilà, notre application est disponible. Donc, on peut accéder à notre application. Donc, on peut le voir ici, l'application est disponible. À travers HTTP. Une fois que c'est vérifié, nous allons continuer. Maintenant, euh, ok, nous allons découvrir le flux de travail complet. Donc, c'est-à-dire, nous allons effectuer les modifications. Créer, et, pour ne pas dire créer à nouveau, un, un nouveau une nouvelle image de conteneur que nous allons redéployer sur Flagrant. Donc ici, il y a le contenu, le contenu de notre application. Comme vous pouvez voir, il y a des notes, euh, des conseils sur votre droite oh. ah ok um. ok uh, excusez ok on dit modifier le titre de la page et déployer à nouveau l'application cela on peut déployer aussi à nouveau l'image du contenu ok on va d'abord modifier notre application. Et puis, on va mettre ici un mec. Donc, je vais regarder la fait de modification. Je viens dans mon chaîne. Euh, je vais maintenant reconstruire mon image. Donc, je vais faire euh, un nouveau but. Non, ok. Alors, pas juste là. Ok. Je vais reconstruire mon application. Une fois mon application a été. Je construis, maintenant je vais effectuer un push. Après, après ça, je vais déployer l'application sur Cloud Run.
Jom on satu. Okey. Uh, right side so easy, not application to go. Okay, come up with the way, yeah, yeah. So this is called the launch point. This is called the launch point. Je crois que c'est bon maintenant. Ok. C'est correct. Donc, euh, ok, nous allons supprimer notre Wi-Fi. Juste pour nettoyer notre environnement. Il y a la dernière étape. Ok, comme vous avez vu, on a supprimé notre bouquet file qui nous avait permis de créer notre image populaire. Sauf que ici, au lieu d'utiliser le bouquet file pour créer notre image populaire, nous allons demander à euh, Google Cloud de créer l'image populaire à partir de notre code source. Et puis de déclarer notre image sur, euh, sur Cloud Run. Donc, si vous n'êtes pas expert en Docker File, vous pouvez juste utiliser cette commande qui va créer l'image et ensuite l'envoyer sur Cloud Run et va l'exécuter pour mettre en place votre application qui sera accessible via HTTP. Il y a un autre image qui a déjà été créé. Maintenant, c'est en train de déployer ce cadre. Ok. Donc, ici, nous allons cliquer sur le lien. Ok. Euh, comme on n'a pas eu à modifier, euh, tout à l'heure, on a eu à modifier, donc les modifications sont restées. Donc ici, sans Docker File, on a pu déployer une nouvelle version de notre application. Comme vous le voyez ici, il y a, il y a, on est en train d'utiliser actuellement la troisième version de notre application. Euh, ici, il y a, si n'est pas actualisé, ici c'était la deuxième version de l'application. Ici c'est la troisième version. Ok, je crois que j'ai fini. Euh, Mr. Wilson le mot de yes. fait. Yes. Um, we are finished with the lab. So, uh, Make sure to click the five yes. star there. Okay. I'm sure you enjoyed it. Okay, uh, you, you, um, uh, okay, please give me one minute.
Okay. We will close the section if there are not no questions. Sure. Yeah. Uh, thank you for uh, very much for this opportunity to do this. Uh, I liked it a lot, uh, and I also enjoyed uh, uh, preparing this session together with you. So that was uh, was really great. And um, yeah. So um, um, and. All, all of those 14 people that st are still in there, thank you for taking the time to do the lab. Um, and if you run into any questions, feel free to reach out to me on uh, Twitter or LinkedIn. I'm happy to, I'm more than happy to answer questions. And in case you're wondering about the hair, uh, there is a, like they closed the uh, hair salons in the Netherlands and I'm, I'm in a queue. I actually, I can go in April. <laughs> All right. So with that, with that said, uh, thank you so much. And uh, uh, see you in... OK. <laughs> Merci. Merci, M. Mitchell, pour la séance. Au revoir. Au revoir. Merci. Au revoir.